Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. If I'm counting right, this is amicus brief number six filed in the SEC v. Ripple case. And the one filed today is an absolute slam dunk, and it is different than all of the other amicus briefs that have been filed to this point. And I'm not saying there's no overlap, but I'll just tell you right now, this amicus explains the underlying tech and its utility and utilization of XRP in greater detail than anything else that's been filed in this entire case. That's my personal opinion, by a long shot. And so uh, who, what, who, who's, who's filing this? Well, it's Jay, the creator of Spend the Bits. Spend the Bits is a, a company that's based out of Canada, and they created a platform designed purely for people to move Bitcoin around and spend it. Because Bitcoin, as you know, layer one blockchain, and I'm, I'm pro-Bitcoin, mind you. I've been holding Bitcoin since 2017, but it is slow. It is the least technologically sophisticated cryptocurrency on the entire damn planet. And Lightning Network, which has been in development, I think, since 2016, is nowhere near completion. And it's barely in a workable mode, unless you consider only being able to conduct transactions under $200 to be some sort of workable mode. And there's all sorts, there's all sorts of problems uh, but, you know, what's amazing is that, you know, Satoshi Nakamoto's vision of Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer cash system, it's actually been solved utilizing the XRP ledger and specifically XRP. You don't need Lightning Network to, to, to get your Bitcoin moving around because Bitcoin can be represented on the XRP ledger. The problem's already been solved. And... You just, you're, you're absolutely going to love this. So I printed up this uh, <laughs> this amicus brief here. I think it was 24 pages in total. And I, I highlighted the parts that I found to be most interesting. And really, I barely took any notes. It's so, I mean, oh, there's plenty of comments along the way. But um, it's pretty darn straightforward here. Uh, but powerful. Very, very, very powerful. And um, <laughs> one of the things that was brought up, and I'd actually thought about this conceptually, uh, was that spin the bits... If it continues to scale, and, they, and they, they actually point this out in the brief, like spend the bits could be a competitor to Ripple's on-demand liquidity, quite literally. So you'd have two competing platforms potentially uh, both utilizing XRP. I don't mind the competition. The, the more adoption, the better. Just interesting stuff. But before sharing additional thoughts and ideas with you, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, and oh, also, shout out and credit to James K. Filan, attorney and member of the XRP uh, community. Thank you very much, Mr. Filan, for sharing this amicus brief all up on the Twitters. And so here we go. And, I, you know, I tried to be pretty picky with what I selected, but, man, there are some parts where I just had to cover... Um, very large chunks, and but that's fine. I, I, I was still pretty choosy with it, but um, it's it's just I haven't seen anything like this filed in the SEC v. Ripple case uh, ever. You know, until this point, uh, definitely not. So I got to get down to right here. Oh yeah, here we go. I'm gonna start right about here, and I'll try to remember to scroll down for those of you that enjoy looking at a screen while I go through uh, the latest Moon Nambo hot jam. All right, so uh, spin the bits. Um, again, is the name of the company, and it's um, they use STB uh, shorthand for that throughout this. So when you hear STB, it's an, it's crucial that you understand this now because I may not repeat it very frequently. STB is the company Spin the Bits, which is uh, moving Bitcoin around the planet and using it for payments uh, on the XRP ledger. So here we go. Uh, the STB app is a digital payment platform where users can send, spend, and receive Bitcoin using PayString ID. Similar to email, PayString ID is a universal payment identifier assigned to users that allow for the generic transfer of value between users in a similar manner to how information is transferred between different users, uh, user emails like Hotmail to Yahoo. Uh, PayString ID utilizes one master address to represent any number of sub-addresses on any generic payment network, centralized or decentralized, while preserving the privacy of user account numbers on the respective network. So I'll pause to note, uh, Ripple actually pushed very hard for pay stream adoption when this thing was first launched. And I can't remember how long it's been. It feels like it's been at least two or three years at this point. But pay stream, it, it really is pretty well as they described it here. 
Um, it's the idea of, uh, you know, moving money around as easy as an email. So basically, you have your, your address, your pay string address, which address, address, your pay string address. And instead of having the at symbol like you do in email, you have a dollar sign there. Uh, because it's it's intended to move value, right? So it could be your name, dollar sign, and then d- the domain, for example. Whereas with email, it's whatever the name is, at, and then the domain, right? And so you can just punch that in, and it doesn't matter whether it's a, a cryptocurrency or a traditional payment rails. Uh, pay string is set up in such a way that if you send it to that address, they just get it. That, that's that's the theory behind it. Now, um, it, it's... Um, it's just, it's interesting to see how this is being adopted here. And you'll see as we go through this too, like spin the bits here, they really lay out their entire business model. And it is so interesting because I, I had like kind of a loose understanding of how um, the XRP ledger was used by spin the bits. Cause I understand, of course, there's a decentralized exchange built into the XRP ledger and you can tokenize Bitcoin. It can move about, but they go into much greater detail. I just found it endlessly fascinating to see how their business model actually works. Um, but it also plays into, uh, you know, the, um, the argument that Ripple's been making, which is that, of course, there clearly is no common enterprise. It has been the bitches did this on their own. Uh, and then we continue. Uh, STB has been built slash deployed on layer one of the XRP ledger. STB is an application layer that is designed to bridge any layer one blockchain or payment rail to any other payment rail. Uh, let me jump down just a little bit to right uh, here. Uh, the cost of processing Bitcoin payments with STB is approximately 0.1% for most transactions, as compared to fees of approximately 35 to 5% when processed by banks or credit cards. <laughs> Think about this. And the SEC, if they have their way, this won't be allowed in the United States. This will not be allowed. So the fact that you can change, instead of having 35 to 5% in fees, dropping that down to 0.1%, like that's that'll fundamentally change fundamentally change the way that money moves around the planet. It'll change it'll change spending habits for humans across the globe if, if adopted at scale. And the SEC doesn't want that here. That is messed up. That is a horrendous problem. Let's pick up from right here for those of you looking at the screen. Because of the Securities and Exchange Commission's allegations in this lawsuit, STB has not launched in the United States. However, STB is taking steps to register and launch in El Salvador, where Bitcoin is legal tender. While the SEC is supposed to concern itself with investments, the wide net it has cast in this litigation has hooked XRP purchasers, users, and developers alike. If this court deems XRP a security, STB would be prevented from launching in the U.S., depriving U.S. consumers from benefiting from the innovation and cost savings STB offers. Thus, STB has a strong interest in this case and provides yet another distinguishable example that undermines the integrity of the SEC's claims regarding XRP. Oh, God, I love that. Uh, let's drop down to, let's see, bottom of page four. Okay, yes, yeah, so I'm going to jump back in right here. Take a look at this. Uh, currently, There exists over 170 validators and 900 nodes operating around the world, run by a broad range of individuals, universities, institutions, and exchanges. For consensus to be reached in the XRP ledger network, a minimum of 80% of the validators must agree. Ripple runs six validators, thus controlling less than 4% of all validators within the network, giving Ripple no power over the network. It's a positive thing. And I brought this up so many times, but it's worth repeating it quickly here at least once. There can be no common enterprises. Ripple doesn't have power over any of this. It is not Ripple's, which is why I've also said in the past, if Ripple, and they'd never do this, but if Ripple actually tried to register XRP as a security with the SEC, I would be personally offended. I, like, I think we have to start a campaign against Ripple because the audacity, how dare they presume that XRP is theirs? They don't have any special powers. How dare they? But of course, they, you know, they never do that. But you get the point, right? Um, and then let me jump down to uh, right here. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of XRP ledger developers with no connection to Ripple running applications on the XRP ledger. 
In short, the SEC fundamentally misunderstands the nature of open, permissionless, decentralized, distributed ledger computer networks that are open to the world. <laughs> Pause. Um, actually, I'll push back against that a little. No, they don't. They're just being disingenuous asshats. They're liars. No, they, they understand the decentralized nature here of the XRP ledger, and they don't care. They are outright lying. There's no way they don't understand this. Not a chance in hell. Uh, they've done too much research to, to just not know this. And then, uh, anyway, uh, spin the bits continues. There are tutorials available to teach and instruct even the most non-technical individuals on how to utilize the technology. The SEC is simply wrong when it asserts that STB lacks the technical skill to contribute to the XRP ecosystem. And then here is a quote from the SEC, which they cited here. Uh, in contrast to Ripple, investors in XRP cannot take most or any of the steps that Ripple has taken to grow the XRP ecosystem and increase demand for XRP. Most, if not all, XRP investors simply lack the technical exper expertise and the resources to do so. End quote. So that's from the, the SEC, and it's cited there by Spin the Bits, and that's just factually incorrect. And so then they write... In fact, anyone can learn how to code on the XRP ledger without a technical background. Just ripping this all the shit. And it's so good because, again, for, for most of what we've seen, you know, it's, it's been fantastic having all the uh, am amicus uh, applicants, which is what this is, by the way. Just to be clear, I don't know if I was clear enough when I started the video. This is an amicus brief. They filed an application. Uh, the judge has to technically approve this still. Um, but, but still, out of everything that I've seen filed to this point, like, they are just nailing it on the technology side. So I, I feel good because I know that Judge Torres is being sufficiently armed with information from all, like all sorts of different, um, you know, you know, thought processes that one could pursue in trying to come to a conclusion on what's right and wrong in the SEC v. Ripple case. Um, now let's go down to, all right, well, a little bit lower. Yeah, here we go. Uh, start right here. Okay. Not only is 100% of STB revenue from Bitcoin, but STB never received any incentives, compensation, or XRP from Ripple to build the STB application. Ripple and its executives did not provide any input, influence, control, or consent to the development, launch, or use of STB. The SEC's position that XRP is an investment contract with Ripple is destroyed by the way STB and others like it Build applications on the XRP ledger. Whoo! Hallelujah! I love hearing this too. App, and it is, it's app, absolutely destroys the arguments. The judge will clearly see this, right? Um, and it was interesting here too. Spin the bits business model uh, is to get paid 100%, at least that's what it is right now. 100% of revenue comes from Bitcoin, not from XRP. XRP is just used functionally and it gets burnt with transactions, so XRP is held. But, but Jay from Spin the Bits isn't making any money by utilizing XRP on the Spin the Bits platform. They're making it all from Bitcoin. And so maybe it'll expand and do all sorts of other stuff, transfer other stuff in the future. But right now, this is a very pro-Bitcoin platform. And so it's just neat to see that XRP and the XRP ledger could help ensure the long-term viability of Bitcoin. It actually could. I mean, it's getting used here. We'll see what happens and, and to what degree this scales. But it's a cool as hell business model, don't you think? I do. I mean, Jay from Spin the Bits is to be applauded, for sure. This is incredible. For that, and then also for um, actually filing an am amicus brief, or we'll technically hear an application, but still. Um, let's move down a little bit further now. Securities laws do not apply. This section right here. Uh, STB's acquisition and consumptive use of XRP demonstrates that XRP does not constitute an investment contract. The Securities Exchange Act of 1934 gave the SEC broad authority over the securities industry, but when a purchaser is motivated by a desire to use or consume the item purchased, the securities laws do not apply. And I'll note that that comes from a case. Uh, so there is actual case law behind that. And then they continue. In contrast to an investment intent, an individual may acquire an asset with a desire to use or consume the item purchased. Simply put, a transaction does not fall within the scope of the securities laws when a reasonable purchaser is, uh, is motivated to purchase by a consumptive intent. Therefore, based on XRP's functional utility, uh, independent of Ripple, XRP serves as a commodity and therefore not subject to the securities laws. Exactly. 
Now, now that's, a t that's a concept that has been cited on the channel, but it's powerful and it's in here, so I want to make sure that I uh, cited that as well. Um, but they, they attack him from multiple angles here. Uh, so now we get to this section under the Howie analysis. And, and not that we should even get to the Howie analysis. And and so Ripple argues because there's no no contract, so there can't be an investment contract. And here, as you already just saw, uh, Spin the Bits is saying, this is for consumptive use, so for that reason also you don't get to the Howie test. But they still talk about the Howie test anyway, just in case, which is perfectly reasonable. And so we'll jump to right here. The SEC cannot prove there is a common enterprise and tries to argue that XRP represents the investment contract because it embodies all of Ripple's efforts. The SEC cannot satisfy the Howey test with such sweeping allegations that implicate XRP purchasers who had no knowledge of Ripple who purchased XRP on the secondary market and who developed use cases independent of Ripple's efforts. <laughs> another hallelujah, please. Uh, then there's another section here. There is no common enterprise. The second factor of the Howey test is whether a common enterprise existed. Ripple's vision of XRP utility involved improvements to the banking infrastructure and the financial system. STB, on the other hand, is a peer-to-peer -peer payment platform that is actually fulfilling the original goal of Bitcoin by creating a platform for instant peer-to-peer -peer transactions. While the CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, has taken the position that you can't buy coffee with XRP, STB is designed to facilitate such purchases. This alone illustrates the exact opposite of a common enterprise. Exactly. So there you got go, the guy heading uh, Ripple, allegedly the common enterprise, says, no, you can't do it. You can't be buying a, you're not, you're not, you're not buying coffee with, with Bitcoin or XRP. And he said both, by the way. Um, and Spin the Bits is like, yeah, you can, and we're going to make that possible. And I remember even Attorney Deaton said this too. He's like, the fact that Brad Garlinghouse said that, it doesn't matter. That's just one person's opinion. And I'm a fan of Brad Garlinghouse, but he is not the ruler of XRP or the XRP ledger, nor is he trying to be. But that's the point. And so the SEC uh, points out this, this uh, they, they have previously pointed out that Brad Garlinghouse stated this, meaning, hey, it's not a currency, blah, 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 this or that. It's like, it doesn't matter what he says. It's one person. There is no common enterprise, and you can use your XRP in place of a traditional fiat currency. People do it every single day. Uh, then we continue right here. Okay, whoops. There we go. Okay. Uh, STB is not in any sort of common enterprise with Ripple or its executives. The STB app is well suited to facilitate payments in Bitcoin to brick and mortar and online merchants because transactions are confirmed quickly, securely, and efficiently, unlike the current case with the Bitcoin blockchain, where transactions are slow to process and inefficient resulting in significant pain points of volatility, settlement time, and payment finality for retail merchants. The SEC alleges that the fortunes of XRP purchases are, uh, purchasers are dependent on the success of Ripple's XRP strategy. But STB is a perfect example of a different strategy that adds value to XRP independent of Ripple's vision. In order for a common enterprise to exist, the fortunes of each investor depend upon the profitability of the enterprise as a whole. Ripple, if Ripple were to fail and cease to exist, STB would continue its business operations unhindered in Canada, El Salvador, and anywhere Bitcoin adoption progresses. The fortunes of J. Cambo and STB depend on two things, Bitcoin adoption and the efforts of STB not Ripple. So look, if you're if you're talking about Bitcoin having true utility, uh, and, and it does, like honestly, it's like I let me say this. I understood like the general concept of spin the bits, and you're about to understand a lot more if you stick around with me through the end of this video. It's very interesting. I will say this, and we'll see if, if it spin the bits really does scale far beyond where it is right now. I will be very confident very confident in the long-term viability of Bitcoin because it'll be able to do something. It can fulfill its original vision then. And there, there will be, I'm sure there'll be competing platforms that'll do stuff like this, but you don't need Lightning Network even. Maybe it works one day. Okay, super duper. But I'm telling you, if, if, if this scales, I'm just like, I'm on board, man. I mean it. And, and, and then it's also, it's, it's just like, it's such an interesting ecosystem then because 
the STB can, can help to ensure, if it scales, the long-term viability of Bitcoin, and then Bitcoin getting used as actual money would help to ensure the long-term viability of XRP and the XRP ledger. Symbiotic, my friends. Wouldn't that be cool as hell? So it doesn't mean for sure that's how this is all going to pan out. It's too early to know for sure, but it could happen. And I think that's neat. I hope it happens. I want Bitcoin and XRP to succeed and be around forever. That would be my preference. It really would be. Um, now let's pick up right here. Um, under the section titled, There is no expectation of profits from Ripple, uh, Ripple's efforts. The SEC has fought to keep XRP purchasers, users, and developers from sharing their perspective, knowledge, and or use cases in this court. This is likely because truth, such truth destroys its assertions that users and developers independent of Ripple don't have the ability or resources to grow the XRP ecosystem, that they can't develop a use for the token without Ripple support. So I'll pause to note there. Those are some damn true words right there. Why do you think the SEC has fought? Uh, every uh, Everyone that's uh, you know attempted to uh, participate as uh, Michi Kiria, you know, the friends of the court. Why, why, why has the SEC been pushing back against every single amicus brief application that's been filed? Because it destroys them. The SEC knows they're on the wrong side of this. They know they're lying pricks. These are terrible humans. Of course they know. They're not stupid. They're just terrible little monsters. All right, now let's pick up right here. At present, the focus for STB is bridging the Bitcoin layer one mainnet using the transactional properties of the XRP ledger. Oh, and you're gonna love. So I think this is the part now where we get into how this. Yeah, this is it. This is not, you're gonna love this. I mean, I hope you're as fascinated by this. I was really interested because I'd been wondering, just kind of in the back of my mind from time to time, how exactly does spin the bits work? And again, like I said, I already understood the some of the higher level conceptual things, but what about the rest of it? Well, a lot of it's uncovered here, and it's really, really interesting. At present, the focus for STB is bridging the Bitcoin Layer 1 mainnet using the transactional properties of the XRP ledger. Uh, STB, as an application, allows users onboarding without requiring the use of any particular currency, although at present, STB only facilitates Bitcoin payments. Once the user account creation process is completed, the user funds their STB Bitcoin provided wallet with Bitcoin from another wallet on the Bitcoin blockchain. STB utilizes a third-party gateway, BitGo, as a Bitcoin custodian for all deposits and withdrawals of, of Bitcoin using BitGo's application programming interface, or API for short. And so let's pause now. That I had no idea. I've been wondering, like, okay, I got it. There's an IOU that represents Bitcoin on the XRP ledger. Yeah, duh, got it. But, like, wh whose facility is, like, a spin the bit somehow uh, making sure that there's sufficient Bitcoin available because that could be rather expensive, especially if you're scaling quickly. But it looks, you can see they partnered with a third party, BitGo, and they're making that part of the magic happen. So once that, that partnership was set up, that's, I mean, that seems like a huge part of the, the special saucer. What a cool idea, right? Uh, and then anyway, uh, then the, the amicus brief continues. Uh, BitGo Inc. is a digital asset trust, custodial, and security company headquartered in Palo Alto, California. None of this involves any efforts of Ripple or its executives. And by the way, they keep saying that sentence again and again and again and again, whacking the judge over the head with it, which is perfectly fine, that uh, Ripple and its executives have nothing to do with this. Uh, then they continue. STB queries secondary market exchanges to determine the exchange rate between Bitcoin and XRP. Using the exchange rate, an amount of Bitcoin equivalent to 10 XRP is deducted from the user's STB Bitcoin wallet in order to activate the XRP ledger wallet and allow for ledger fees. So I'll pause to note, and I'm sure many of you are aware of this, but in order to set up uh, a, a brand new XRP wallet, there is a reserve fee. Uh, it used to be 20 XRP, it's currently 10 XRP. And um, that helps to prevent spam of the network. And, um, you know, and again, so this, again, moving Bitcoin, that's why I was saying a symbi symbiotic earlier, symbiotic earlier. Because if this really gets traction, it's going to require XRP. And even if it's just a small amount of XRP that's required to initially set up the account, I think that instills confidence in the long-term viability of XRP. And people, there will always be separate people that are just speculating too here. But, but so anyway, they take uh, you know, 10 XRP worth of Bitcoin to set up the wallet. That's how it goes. And then you can get a rocking and a rolling here. Uh, STB then creates an equivalent amount of Bitcoin IOUs 
on the XRP ledger using the remaining Bitcoin in the user's STB Bitcoin wallet. These IOUs have a legal obligation for redemptions with the third-party custodian BitGo Inc. None of this involves any efforts of Ripple or its executives. So I'll just pause and note here. It is true that this is a centralized solution to use Bitcoin as money, so I'm not going to pretend like it isn't. But you can think about it. But still, I don't think that's, that would hinder the adoption of Bitcoin to be used as money, though. I really don't. Because think about it. If, you, if you're worried about a centralized entity um, you know, taking your Bitcoin and running or getting hacked or this or that, which is a legitimate concern, you just keep on there whatever you need. You can always transfer more over, but you can keep your core Bitcoin in your um, cold storage wallet, your own personal one. You can always move more. And you can always move out. You can always move it out. Uh, so it, it really functionally, I don't think matters. Like I, I wouldn't be afraid to use it. If I, if I ever want to use Bitcoin as money, if this is ever available in the United States, I wouldn't be afraid to use this personally. Um, so again, yeah, there's, it's a centralized solution, but I just, eh, who cares? And plus there's still arguments that lightning network has degrees of centralization. So I don't think you get away from it no matter what, if you're going to use Bitcoin as money, but who the hell cares? I don't, I seriously don't think people are going to care because you still have control over your Bitcoin and the monetary policy behind Bitcoin doesn't change. It's already coded. It's a known factor. And it's going to effectively uh, behave as though it's deflationary, even though there's nothing deflationary pr programmed into Bitcoin. But, you know, Bitcoin gets lost. And then on top of that, with all sorts of people like, continually adopting Bitcoin, you know, you can still keep your, your you know, just about 100% of your Bitcoin secure. You put up a little bit if you want to use it as money. And OK, it seems like a pretty reasonable solution to me. Anyway, uh, the amicus brief continues. This obligation is also true for STB to STB wallet transfers. For example... A user can transfer one Bitcoin worth of value from their STB wallet to another user's STB wallet using the XRP ledger, and ultimately, if desired, redeem with the BitGo Inc. gateway. Once the user has Bitcoin in the wallet, each transaction is facilitated using STB, and by extension, the XRP ledger burns a fraction of XRP as a fee mandated by the security algorithm inherent to the XRP ledger decentralized network. None of this involves any effort of Ripple or its executives. So it's pause note. That's the coolest damn thing here. And so to be crystal clear, and in case, I mean, especially if you're new, you might be unaware of this, or hopefully you can follow around with what I'm talking about here, but there's a representation of Bitcoin uh, on, on the XRP ledger. It's a token. You can call it an IOU also. It's the same thing here. That's what moves around with blazing speed because anything XRP, which is the native asset, or anything that you create, that any token you create, uh, on, on the XRP ledger, it's still going to settle with finality in three to five seconds. So that's already happening. And then when you want to you know, go ahead and redeem that for, for actual Bitcoin, then you can. But for, for, to the end user, it looks just like Bitcoin, except for it's blazing fast. The, the, the end user doesn't even really have to know anything about XRP, which are or the XRP ledger, which is the coolest thing. Um, now we can jump in right here. Uh, the settlement time for Bitcoin Layer 1 blockchain is approximately one hour, which lends itself to significant volatility. The core competitive advantage of STB in the payment space is the ability to make payments in Bitcoin's equivalent IOUs within three to five seconds, eliminating the majority of the volatility risk. Final settlement of an equivalent amount of Bitcoin is facilitated by the third-party gateway, BitGo Inc., at the time of the withdrawal from their STB account, back to the user's personal Bitcoin Layer 1 wallet. None of this involves any effort of Ripple or its executives. In fact, if STB were to scale, check this out, guys. If STB were to scale, it could, in theory, become a competitor to Ripple's ODL system that also runs on the XRP ledger. And how about that? And like I said, I, that concept had entered my mind. People could use that instead. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but in theory, it's, it sure as hell could. And so you can redeem your Bitcoin at any time. And it, XRP is a requirement for this. That's real utility, unquestionably, having nothing to do with Ripple. Where's the common enterprise? There isn't one. The SEC is a bunch of pricks. They're a bunch of liars. And then we get to this section at the, at the end um, titled, Decentralized Blockchain Technology is Not a Security. The XRP ledger is a decentralized public blockchain that is maintained by a diverse set of software engineers, server operators, users, and businesses, not Ripple. STB and others like it have independently developed applications on the XRP ledger without the knowledge, consent, or efforts of Ripple or its executives. Those applications utilize XRP as the native token 
on the of the XRP ledger, disproving the SEC's contention that speculative investment is the main reason anyone would purchase XRP. STB purchased XRP from a third party to create an application on the XRP ledger in order to solve a problem related to Bitcoin transfers. It is well established that Bitcoin is not considered a security. Now, I'll note that's a quote from the Telegram case. It is well established that Bitcoin is not considered a security. But the SEC wants this court to rule that technology used to transfer it is. Pause. Isn't that absurd? The Bitcoin is not a security. At least the SEC is not asserting that it is. And they probably never will. But the technology used to move it around, to move that Bitcoin around, that is centralized? And that is a security? No. Hell no. And then they wrap up by stating America is supposed to be a land of opportunity, a place of innovation, and a country for the people. But it seems through its efforts to persecute Ripple, the SEC has done more to restrict opportunity, hinder innovation, and harm the very people it alleges to serve. The impact of what is felt, uh, the impact of which is felt, well beyond the American border. Isn't that cool as hell? That is powerful, highly persuasive, and very different. It's just, it's just genuinely interesting to see how this business model actually works. And I didn't know they were getting paid purely. I didn't know what the business model really was. I understood, like I said, some concepts about it. That's just cool as hell. And they didn't have to themselves scale to the point where they could offer custody of Bitcoin because STB partnered with that third party, BitGo. That's just, I mean, it's brilliant. It, it is. And so now you have this, this ecosystem that encourages the actual use, like this, to be clear, this app, Spin the Bits, which utilizes XRP, uh, you know, to, as the backbone to make this all happen, it, it encourages people to use Bitcoin in real life. That's awesome. That is pushing real world adoption of cryptocurrencies. It helps to ensure the long-term viability of Bitcoin. So I, I wish them nothing but the greatest success in the world. I really do. Because it'd be great from Bitcoin and XRP. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, but I'll go ahead and wrap up here. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.